Happy Thanksgiving. Look here, I'm right by a Christmas tree and, and tonight, tonight we reveal all of the lights. We have been decorating the whole lobby and the whole church. Uh, as the people enter in, there'll be no lights, no music, but when the service is over with, we all go out and I go out and they switch, or I say switch, they flip the switch and all the Christmas trees and lights and the balcony and all of us that are in there, we're going to see as we start Christmas. It's going to be a great evening. This is an evening of Thanksgiving and uh, all the holiday schedules and what is happening is going to be uh, told about in this service and we're going to reveal tonight the Scrooge set. One of the most important things though about tonight is Thanksgiving. We're going to eat our Thanksgiving meal with Jesus. All of you that are not attending, you're not attending live, prepare, get some grape juice or a little wine and a cracker. Prepare, have it ready when we have our Thanksgiving meal, which is Holy Communion tonight, it'll be so special. I, I think that tonight that we will hear a clear sound how we have been building up that the Lord has given us um, a word. I believe it's a word, a salutation, that to the body of Family Christian Center and all of those that are watching and that hear this word, there, there's definitely a, a something, I, I wish I could describe it, I'm kind of like Paul. Paul in the third chapter of uh, you know Ephesians, he tries to explain the mystery and the dispensation of Christ there is definitely something that is going to happen. And uh, I believe it is in this service and it is in this season in which the people that have responded and have been obedient, God is going to do something great from now to the end, if not into the January season. So tonight, let us come, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Tonight we have some surprises. This is not a regular big Wednesday night. This is a real surprise service of good things that God is going to do for you. Get on the phone, get people to con connect and say, you gotta, you got to see what's going to happen tonight. I am so excited about Thanksgiving service and our meal, eating a Thanksgiving meal with Jesus. So we're going to go in, turn the volume up, get ready, and let God give you that special word of what he's going to do for you in this season.
you to love on Jesus tonight. So thankful for your love. Mm -hmm. So worthy. Thank you, Jesus.
believe that Jesus will answer your prayers. Take your red card. Everybody has been given a green or red card. Take it. Put your prayer request upon it. And then pass it to the middle. Pass it toward the middle so the ushers will pick them up. And in the balcony, just pass them to the end of the row. And all that on the main floor, all of you that are watching, give us your prayer requests. We're going to put them in the manger and we're going to pray. On Christmas Eve, we will burn all of these cards, but we believe that what you have written, that a miracle is going to happen. And it doesn't matter how many prayer requests you have. We're going to put it in the manger. Every Wednesday night, three Wednesday nights, this will come down and we will put our request in the manger. Morning prayer, people will pray. We will pray during the day. People will come in and pray. Write your request down. The Bible says, the Bible says in Philippians, it says, bring all your requests and supplication with thanksgiving. Everybody say thanksgiving. And as we are collecting your cards, and if you haven't written one out, go on and write it. It's important. This is the first time in 2022, this is the first demonstration of the manger coming down. And it will come down every Wednesday night only. And all the requests will be in the manger. And they will be there for the next few days, next 30 days. And then on Christmas Eve, we take them and we burn them. And we believe that every, every person that writes a request down, that it will be answered and we give God all the thanksgiving. Amen. As they start bringing them and as we sing this song again, bring those request ushers from the balcony to the main floor and all of you that are watching, send in your requests so we can put them in the manger. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. This is a night of thanksgiving, so we're doing more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Join in with me. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for every need. You're going to answer. The Bible says they enter into his gates, Psalms 100, with thanksgiving. In other words, God has said, no one can come into my presence unless you thank me. Thank me. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
thank you, Lord God, that we can come to you. And we have already worshipped you with thanking you. And nobody is like you. So everybody right now out loud, at least 10 or 12 thank yous. Just begin to say thank you, Lord, out loud. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Real loud. Thank you, Lord. Come on, a couple more. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now, everybody make this declaration with me. Everybody say, Lord. Lord. In honor of your birth. In honor of your birth. Through a virgin. Through a virgin. You were Emmanuel. You were Emmanuel. We are believing. We are believing. Just as your birth, Just as your birth was, a miracle, was a miracle, so our miracles, so our miracles are, in are in the manger. And we believe, and we believe this is a mighty season, this is a mighty season for, miracles, for miracles, angels, angels and, favor, and favor, and great things. And great things. So we thank you in advance. So we thank you in advance. For the miracles, for the miracles, for this season, for this season, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, when this goes up, I'd like for everybody. I know you're sitting, but you're you're have the freedom to stand, get out in the aisle. I want you all become television journalists. I want you to become the new NBCs and ABCs and Fox and all of the channels, and take your phone out. I want you to put it on video or I want you to take a picture. And as this manger is going up, I want you to send it to your friends and Facebook it. Tell them, let me put your request in the manger. Tell them to contact you or send it to a friend and say, what would you like for us to pray for? I will put it in the manger. So as it goes up tonight, the first time in 2022, you could stand, you could take a picture, get in the aisle, get a picture of it or get a video, send it to somebody. Come on, all of us need to let everybody know Jesus still does miracles, amen? So get ready as it goes up right now. The music is playing and the manger starts tonight. A Bah Humbug musical, adapted from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, is a timeless Christmas classic. We'll journey with Ebenezer Scrooge as he encounters three spirits that provoke him to change his life for the better. We'll see actors, live animals, a magic bed, dancers, special effects, Victorian era costuming, and so much more. This amazing production is fun for the whole family. Tickets are on sale today for Scrooge, A Bah Humbug musical, coming this December.
Now let me show you what's going to happen. Malachi has been directing Malachi Muncy, the new generation. So all the Scrooge cast, come on up here. Come on, give them a great big hand. The whole Scrooge cast, as they come up here, let's give them a little taste of what's getting ready to happen in 2022. Somebody cheer, somebody cheer. Come on, run, 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 run. Look at the cast of 2022. Look at them, look at them. All right, come on. Give the cast of 2022. They're going to come up here. They're getting in place. Don't even bother. 
don't buy any tickets and don't come because I don't want to see you. Don't bother about trying to change me because I like the way that I am. I like to be grumpy, I like to be old, and I like to be left alone. So you stay in your house and I'll stay in mine. I don't like Christmas because Christmas, all people want to do is ask you for money. Well, if you want to have cash, you better call J.G. Whitworth because I don't want any cash. Isn't that right, ghost? I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call J.G. Whitworth, 877 cash now. 877 cash now. 877 cash now. Call now. Ah, humbug. You sound just like you look dead and ghostly. Well, I guess since you're all here, you want to know what's going on here at Family Christian Center. Well, let's look at the screen and check out what's going on right here at Family Christian Center. Humbug to you all. Hey, FCC, have you ever wanted to further your education? We've partnered with one of the top Christian universities in America, Southeastern University, where you can get the best biblically grounded education at an affordable price. We already have several students here at FCC that are on their way to earning an associate's bachelor's or master's degree. And yes, Southeastern University provides fully accredited degree programs along with hands-on training through the FCC Creative Experience. Our mission through SEU at FCC is to help you learn, grow, and become all who God has called you to be. If you would like to begin your college educational journey or you want more information, we would invite you to visit our website at FCC4Me.com. You can also go to the lobby and pick up a brochure for more information. Or if you have any questions, feel free to email us at seuinfo at FCC4Me.com. So we hope to see you here next semester at SEU at FCC. for my family and my friends. I'm thankful for all of us. I'm thankful for my friends and family and most importantly, God. I'm thankful for Christmas. I'm thankful for all the things that God has blessed me with and I'm also thankful for what's to come. This year I'm thankful for my family, my wife, and my two beautiful girls. I'm thankful for my friends and family. I'm thankful for my pastors and my mentors. I'm thankful for everyone in my life, my family, my friends. I'm thankful to be back in church, so I'm just very thankful. Thank you for everything. I'm thankful for my sweet potatoes and macaroni. I'm thankful for my family, friends, a house, um, clothes, and food. I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for my friends as well. I am thankful for my beautiful wife and my family. I'm thankful for life. I'm thankful for Family Christian Center. I am thankful that I am able to serve. I am thankful that I am able to reach, reach the lost and bring those that are lost to Him, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am so thankful for this season. I'm thankful to God for everything. I am so very thankful for God is a good God. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the greatest pastor of all, Pastor Stephen K. Muzzy. Because yes. we're blessed, we're over full, and we're full of abundance. Yes. Thank you, God, for blessing us. I'm thankful. Thankful for my mother. I'm glad that she is still here and with us. I'm thankful for my mother. Thankful for my father-in-law who's 91 years old. He is here. Thankful for my wife, Melody, the greatest pastor's wife in the world right here at Family Christian Center. I'm thankful for the musicians. I'm thankful for all of the people that put the set up, Edgar and all the crew, and I'm thankful for the ushers, and I'm thankful for the tech people. 
thankful for Tavon. I'm thankful for Malachi. I'm thankful for Cheryl. I'm thankful for so many names I could call out. I'm so thankful. Thankful for my children. I'm thankful for my son and my daughter. I'm thankful that I live in the United States of America. And I'm thankful that I'm alive. I'm thankful that God has delivered me and saved me. I'm thankful that out of all of my mistakes, he has forgiven me and he has made me a new creature. There is a, there's a strong love in my life and, and it's uh, in Melody and I's. It's, it's a strong love. It's a passion. And that is you, the church of the living God, the church, the people. You are the church. And I'm ever so thankful because you're thankful and that you respond to God's word. All of you that are watching, I am so thankful. I could go on. I've been doing my best. I've been doing my best even this morning. In every which way, I've been trying to say thank you. Thank you for the grocery store. Thank you for the people that brought the groceries in tonight for all Operation Care. Thank you for the flowers. I just, I just, I just been doing my best to thank him for the trees. Thank him for the roads. Thank him for my neighbors. I'm so thankful. My neighbors are here tonight, and I'm so thankful for them because they, I have a manger scene, in, uh, of Jesus, and we share our lawn side by side. Last year I stole their electricity. This year, I asked them for their electricity. And the news said, sure, plug in. I want to thank them for the electricity. That's a, that's a big deal to Rick Newell. You just have to know how he counts his pennies. I'm thankful for every mother. I thank you. I'm thanking God for every single mother. I thank God for every single father. I thank, for, I thank God for you fathers. Stand up, you're a father. I thank God for every father. Stand up, fathers. I thank God that you are mighty fathers. You're wonderful fathers. You're good men. You're providing for your children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All mothers stand up. Thank you, mothers, for being faithful and cooking and, and providing and ironing and Thank you for washing our clothes. Thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for every son. You may be seated for every son, every daughter. Thank you. Thank you for all of your talent. Thank you. And most of all, we could not have any of that unless we thank God. Come on, let's thank God. God, we thank you. You're a mighty God. You're an incredible God. You're a wonderful God. You're a fabulous God. You're an incredible God. Thank you. I think it was yesterday morning I got up and I actually did this. I recommend it highly. I don't know if I've done this before, may have. I actually, I was in a room by myself and was drinking coffee and was waiting on Melody to come down. It was early morning. Nobody was stirring and it was very, very early. And I, I took a chair and I sat it down opposite of me and I said, Jesus, I'd like to talk to you. Do you mind taking a seat? That's what I did. Sometimes we pray and preach. So he was sitting down and so I, I couldn't pray and preach like, oh God, I want you to do something great now. Lord Jesus, I want you to heal every... I just talked to him. I said, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you, sir. Thank you for saving me. And we had this conversation. It seemed one way, but I could feel that he was hearing everything that I said. And I began to thank him for... I was talking to the chair. Now some would say, you know, that's a little bit off. But for me, for me, I was in prayer. 
I was thanking him. So thank him for the turkey. Even when you go to, if somebody comes to your house, you go to their house and they don't pray, you can't stop and say, hey, we're going to pray because it's not your house. But if it's your house, say, everybody, I don't know if you want to do this or not, but we're going to pray. And I always have Taj, the youngest grandchild in our family, to pray. You'd be surprised what the youngest of your children will say when they start praying. It is the most phenomenal thing that comes out of their mouth. Your children should pray. Would you say a prayer? You'll always get this from your children. I don't want to pray. I, I can't pray. But then you should lead them if it's for 20 seconds. But you don't understand there'll be people at our house that are relatives. They don't go to church. They don't believe in God. Well, they're going to believe in God for 20 seconds when you say thank you for the turkey. Thank you for the mashed potatoes. Thank you for whatever you're eating, chicken. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. I want to tell everyone that is connected and is here tonight. I tried my best to portray, to tell you that this night was most important. Many people told me they would be in cars or airplanes and they got to me and said, Pastor, I won't be there, but I'll be watching on my phone. So if you're connected to this word, this word tonight, before we eat our meal with Jesus, this word is about thanksgiving. And just help me sense in here just a little bit. I know that George Washington in the young Congress that we had during the Revolutionary War, the war that was, or the Battle of Saratoga that was won during the Revolutionary War under George Washington, and we were just becoming a nation. And that small Congress did its best to try to get out to everyone in the colonies, let's be thankful. They created a Thanksgiving Day, and it was somewhere around November. Then, as time had its way, and of course, before George Washington in 1671, there were Puritans and Indians and pilgrims that come together. But let me give you the real history so you understand from George Washington to Abraham Lincoln and to Roosevelt, and even today as a national holiday tomorrow. Thanksgiving was really birthed out of the Feast of Tabernacles, the Day of Atonement. And because the Day of Atonement is in this time and season, we're in the second month of the first month, it was, it was, it was the pilgrims that understood the double portion and the harvest and understood that God would bless them. And it was the pilgrims in the Feast of Tabernacles, even though it was in the late part of October, and Thanksgiving began to shuffle its days and movements and war presidents began to honor it. It was birthed, Thanksgiving was birthed out of a biblical principle. We find that, that George Washington, when he made the first declaration in the young Congress of Thanksgiving, so all the children, everybody here needs to know that Thanksgiving was a godly thing. And our president, our very first president, even though we were in war, Revolutionary War, which all students study and we have studied, and that was when we were separating ourselves from the mother country of Britain. And war was going on and we were trying to establish a young, gener a young nation. And George Washington wrote in the first paragraph of the Constitution legalizing the first Thanksgiving. And some of the words I remember, I read it today, and the words were, this is a day we should be grateful to God. I, I would just like to say, I like when, it doesn't matter if it's Democrat or Republican, I like when my president or our president talks about God. I just like it. 
I don't want to live in a country where a president will not speak about God. He should not be ashamed. I love when they say, God bless America. I love when they say, God be with you. And I'm not judging any man or any woman. I'm just saying, I want to make sure that when I vote in the future, I want, I want to vote with somebody who's not against God and who will talk about God. I'm not, and I understand. I understand when we vote, we're not voting in Sunday school teachers and pastors and elders. I understand that. And that'd be probably a good idea, but we've kind of gotten away from that. George Washington said, I want this day, we want to acknowledge God. We want God to know that we're grateful. This is a president of the United States that started this country. Abraham Lincoln came later and he really emphasized it and said, let's make the third uh, Thursday of November of Thanksgiving. All being born out of the tabernacles, all being born out of the pilgrims. And Abraham Lincoln said, I, I am making a law that everyone that has a bell at church should ring in at noon. Then probably time zones weren't like ours. So actually our president made it a law that all churches should ring bells at noon on Thanksgiving. The president was so free in his in making the law for Thanksgiving a holiday, President Abraham Lincoln, and he was struggling because of the Civil War and the issue of the North and South. Think about this. The North, many of you that study history and, and the slaves, which was the black population at that time, um, was in slavery. And uh, Abraham Lincoln fought for all blacks to be free. He fought for that. He convinced, he convinced the northern part of the United States. The South was not, South was not in agreement. And we were divided in the United States. And we actually fought over people's freedom. And in the midst of that, we lost one million, listen to this, one million soldiers died. We've never had a war since the United States started that we lost one million soldiers. But we fought against ourselves in this nation over an issue of men being free. And I wish I could walk up to Abraham Lincoln and say to him, thank you, sir, for being bold. I know you took a bullet for it. I know you were assassinated and killed for it. But it was such a great moment when freedom came to the whole United States of America on the issue of slavery. And Abraham Lincoln said, I want Thursday, I want us to be thankful. Then came President Roosevelt in the 40s and said, we'll start it earlier and do it the third Thursday. That's the reason why it's going to be tomorrow. And he said, we'll make that Thanksgiving. And he then gave credit and glory to God. I want all children, I want everybody here that's listening to this, that this nation, our forefathers, wanted us to take a day to thank God. I'm going to say a few things here. It doesn't mean that these things are wrong, but I want to, I want to be cautious, but I do want to make emphasis. He didn't make Thanksgiving for Target. Nordstrom's, Macy's, or the parade, or for football, or for a day of school. And I know in the shuffle, our children need to be taught, and you parents need to teach your children that Thanksgiving is about thanking God. 
Somebody say, thank you, God. School is not out. I know you think school is out because it's a holiday and you get to do this or that. This is, we don't have Thanksgiving in two days off because it's Black Friday. I just happened to come along with, we took an extra day. Nothing wrong with Black Friday, nothing wrong with football, nothing wrong with all the activity of reunions, etc. But we have to be very, very careful that we do not lose where we came from. Our forefathers died. I said our forefathers, our grandpas, our great-grandpas, they died. And we must teach our children, whether they like it or not, that tomorrow is a day of thanksgiving. And I want all Christians to not be ashamed to bow your head and say, thank you, Lord. If you only do it for 10 seconds, do that at the table. Don't everybody rush to the table and just start eating because that'll prove you don't pray at every meal. I would suggest you do that at every meal. I pray at every meal. When I go to McDonald's, my kids are with me, stop, let's pray. Because I believe we should be thankful. In this Thanksgiving moment, in this Thanksgiving moment, I want to read you something, and then I want to tell you what happened to me at the cross and Something I believe is going to be released upon the people that are hearing this and this week. In the book of Corinthians, in the book of Corinthians, um, Paul talks about some very uh, wonderful things that is going to happen in our lives. And he I want to read it to you because it, this is a word. And I want you to hear this word because it will bless you because of where we are in life. And he talks about, he talks about Thanksgiving. So on the second night that I was at the cross and I was... Um, I was praying during the time, the Feast of Tabernacles, which I started out with that to tell you, that's how Thanksgiving happened with the Puritans and the pilgrims. And they took this season in time because it was so important to God, the Day of Atonement. On the second night, um, I did something that's very biblical, and the Bible talks about um, gifts of spirits. And there's the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, there's the gift of laying on of hands, there's the gift of faith, there's the gift of speaking in tongues, and then the gift of interpreting. There's also the manifestation when someone receives the Holy Spirit, you will speak in tongues. It's a great experience. Somebody says, do I have to do it? No, you get to do it. It's a wonderful thing. And I would encourage you to do it. In fact, when you speak in tongues, it becomes a prayer language, and it's a language the devil don't understand. And it drives him crazy. The Spirit maketh intercession. That's another Bible study and another great time and a great teaching. But there is a portion in the scriptures that Paul says about speaking in tongues, which is someone will speak in tongues and then someone will interpret. Maybe in a crowd of people that somebody will begin to speak in tongues and then someone will interpret. Not that they understand, but God gives the interpretation. I was with Oral Roberts and Oral Roberts told me one time, the great Oral Roberts who uh, created Oral Roberts University and had great healings. And he said, have you ever interpreted your own, when you spoke in tongues, did you ever ask God for the interpretation of it? And I said, no, I usually, no, I never, I never thought of it that way. He said, when you're in prayer sometime and you are in that prayer language, ask the Lord to give you the interpretation, to speak it out. The second night of the cross, I did that. I don't think I've ever done that very much in my life. And I began to speak in tongues, pray in the prayer language, and then I asked the Lord, 
can I have the interpretation? So I began to speak. I, I began to speak in English so I could hear myself. I was the only one there. And at first, my mind and my flesh played tricks on me because what was coming out of my mouth was so good. I said, I, this is just me wishing. I want to be honest with you. I was saying, I'm saying these words because I'm wishing this would happen. But I kept on saying, Lord, reveal. And the more I spoke, I realized it wasn't me, but God was interpreting and giving me this word. And it was for all of you and for the body. He said, I'm going to do great things beginning, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to do great things beginning the week of Thanksgiving. Now, I don't know why he picked that out. I don't know why he said that. And I've been building the body and, and, and trying to awaken everyone to tell you that something, I don't know if this is going to happen to the whole body of Christ. I don't know if this is going to be worldwide. I don't know. I, I don't know. He said, I, I am going to do things that you have been wanting to see. And I'm going to touch the people. And of course, I felt like it was the community of Family Christian Center and anybody connected, and I just felt like that that was what he was saying. And I haven't talked about this too much. This, uh, this really happened to me. And he began to tell me that he was going to raise a lot of you up. And many of you were going to get tremendous amount of favor. He said to me, he says, I'm going to put more power upon people to get wealth and to get favor. And they're going to have mighty influence. And many people are going to ask them why they have what they have. And he said, I'm going to start this. And I don't know, you know, timing wise. He said, I'm going to start it. That's the reason why I said tonight is so important. I'm going to start it. And I, and I truly believe that it is... It is, it has something to do tonight and tomorrow and as we move in to this season of celebration of his birthday. And, and I try, I've, I've tried to remember everything he said about you. He was talking about you, all of you, the church. And that there was going to be mighty miracles and mighty things and that things that you have never seen or things that you have prayed for for many years or months or weeks is going to come to pass. I think we ought to say, thank you, Lord. Now, when I say this, I'm not going to be long because I want to go into the meal. When I say this, you that have faith, you believe in God, you cannot accept what I'm saying with the natural mind. Because if you receive this with the natural mind, you will fold your arms and say, I'll wait till it happens. I'm not talking to you. I can't talk to you. Because faith does not wait till it happens. Faith believes when you speak the word. It happens. If there is any hesitation in what I said, you know, concerning you, and you say, well, oh, that's great. I can't wait for that to happen, but I, I just need to wait and see if what he's talking about is going to happen to me. I want to tell you something. It won't happen to you. But for every person that says, God, if you have spoken a word, my faith, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe. Can I get somebody to say thank you, Lord, in advance? For instance, every college student in here that's come home, all college students, stand to your feet. All college, any college students in here. 
Welcome home. Everybody say, welcome home. Every college student that is standing in this auditorium or you're watching me, you come home. When you go back to your college, something's going to happen. I'm going to tell you, favor's going to come on you and things are going to take place in your life. You have struggled up to here. You better get ready. There's some great things going to happen in your life. And everybody say, in the name of Jesus, touch all of our college students. I want you to hear that. You may be seated. And I want, I want, you, to, I want you to take that word with you. Now, I'm going to show you something. You heard me give you a salutation. Now, listen to the word of the Lord. We have a treasure in earthen vessels, 7th verse, 4th chapter of 2 Corinthians. We have a treasure. Everybody say, we have a treasure. It's in our earthen vessel, which is us, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Next verse. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in our body the dying Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Let us continue. For which we live, are always delivered unto death for the sake of Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. That just, that just simply means that Jesus died for us and we are victorious in every phase of our life. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. In other words, there's life. Jesus came to destroy the works of death. Now, if you do not believe what I told you just a few minutes ago, what God's going to do for you, then listen to this scripture verse, and this will give you a second chance to regear your faith to take a hold of what has been said. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Have I spoken? We also believe and therefore speak. Even if I didn't have an encounter with God on the second night at the cross, and I would just tell you God's about to do something starting tonight and the rest of the year, that would be good enough for faith to say, let it happen. So now speak it into existence. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundance of grace might through, what? Through? There's another revelation, not just your faith, but this is ushered into your life with thanksgiving. Of many redound to the glory of God, which means you believe it, you speak it, and you start thanking God for it before it happens. Money is coming. Favor is coming. The power to get wealth is coming from your life. Deliverance is coming. Favor in the courts, favor on the job, favor in the school. Health is coming and you will not die before your time. Health is coming. New ideas. You will live to see the dream come true. I believe, say it with me, I believe, therefore I speak. Why? Because the spirit of faith is, I believe, I'm going to speak it 
whether my relatives, my mama, my daddy, my brother, my sister, believe it or not, I believe, I speak it. Somebody shout, I believe, I, believe. I, speak, it. I speak it. And one more thing, I thank God, God. it's coming my direction. Oh, North, give up. Oh, South, give up. Oh, West, give up. Oh, East, give up. Give up the silver. Give up the healing. Give up the health. Give up the favor. Everybody jump to your feet and clap your hands and thank God right now. Everybody jump to your feet, clap your hands and thank God. Thank God. Very good. You may be seated. Very good. There's a Thanksgiving before we eat our meal with Jesus and everybody. I told online, before we started this service, I went online and told them to prepare. So stay right there because in the next few moments, singers, will you help me? There's a Thanksgiving offering envelope. And I know we bought turkeys and we have bought milk and eggnog and chicken and ham. What have y'all bought? Tell me what y'all bought. How many is fixing dressing? How many is fixing dressing? Every mother that's fixing some kind of dressing, say amen. amen. Wow. Did you, are you making the dressing or did you already buy it and you're just going to warm it in the oven? Well, I'm kind of wondering. Never mind, I'm not going to. There's a cost with, when somebody says, boy, this turkey is good. Now, personally, I love, I, I'm into fried turkey. Say, I like it when it goes into the boiling peanut oil. And Brandon is doing that for me and for uh, Malachi. I like that. And you know, when I taste it, I go, this is so good. When God starts blessing you, you need to start saying, this is so good. But the turkey did not come 30 days ago and ring my doorbell and say, here I am. Instead, the turkey said, pick me up for $29.95. 42. And so I get it, I prepare it, and I share it, and people say, wow. But there was a cost. Everybody say a cost. How many knows that it cost God his son so you might have life more abundant? I just want to throw this in. I went up on the roof Yesterday, I was working on the set. By the way, I want to say to, I think I get it right, Aaron and Malachi and Tavon, and, uh, and uh, I'm going to miss some names here. T AJ, TJ. I don't know if you noticed it, but we have a brand new LED screen that we're going to use blended in with our set. Don't that look great? And we were putting that up, and I went up on the roof because the roofer completed $95,000 of new uh, gutters. And what I'm so excited about, our gutters were backing the water up and the building was starting to leak over time, and he did such a great job. I was so pleased. I went up, checked it all out, he showed me that the, that the water will not back up no more into the building. He showed me all of the work. And I said, thank you, Lord. And when, when you give a thank you offering to the house, you're blessing the house. I looked up at all the air conditions. They're not up there yet, but they're doing all the wiring and they've ordered some nearly $700,000 worth of units. All these units are 20, 21 years old, they're going down. So 
We had to order all. So this whole 60, 70,000 square foot of roof by January will have all new heat and COVID air conditions, they say, into this building. Why can we do that? Because someone is thankful. And tonight, when we give, we give so the gospel can go forth. And tonight, you could take this thank you offering, take your phone if you don't want the envelope, and you could say, I want to give a thank you offering, and then we're going to eat our Thanksgiving meal, and that's one of the most powerful things that can happen in your health, your body, and your life. Let us, ushers, everybody, let's give as our singers sing to us. say thank you Lord thank you Lord we this is our thank you say this is our thank you this is our thank you offering thank you tithing thank you tithing thank you Lord thank you Lord I'm glad I'm glad I could give I could give thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord all of you that are watching me you have done that we thank you Lord and as you go forth, I want to read you scripture and everybody prepared, get your communion cup. We're going to eat our Thanksgiving meal with Jesus. If you do not have a communion cup, I'm not going to go to the cross. We'll do that the first Sunday, but make sure you have this cup. Raise your hand. They will come and they will serve you. Everybody's got a cup, just hold it up, just hold it up a little bit. I'll have you stand in just a moment in reverence. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 12 chapter, and when he had given thanks, he break it. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. That you died for me. That you died for me. This represents your blood. This represents your blood. And your body. And your body. So Jesus 
he gave thanks and he broke it and he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Everybody look at the cup and say, I remember you, Jesus. I remember you, Jesus. After the same manner, manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of thy blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And everybody say, I remember. I remember. Everybody that's watching me is prepared. You're preparing. You're taking communion with me. Now everybody stand in the building. If you're not already standing, that's quite an honor you stood. I want you to listen to this. Listen, this is very, very important. Paul says these words right here, taking communion. He says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily and eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. In other words, if you are not sincere about what you're to take, it'll curse you, it will not bless you. This is poison. If you stand here with no reverence, don't don't take it. Put it in your pocket. We must discern the fact that he died for us. And this is no game. This is no tradition. This is serious. When I pray over this, this becomes powerful. Now listen to what Paul says. He said, because people take this and they just think it's cute to take and they don't discern, they're not thankful. And, and, and listen to this. You can even have sin in your life. You could be living a lifestyle of sin. But in a moment, you're going to have the opportunity to say, Lord, we're all going to say it, forgive me. Even in ignorant sins. The Bible in the Old Testament talks about ignorant sins, sins that you don't, you, you did but didn't know. And we're going to repent. If you leave anything in your heart and don't discern, it'll do much damage to you. Trust me. It'll take you out. You'll get sick. You won't get any better. But if you take this and discerning the Lord's body, Paul says, he says, there's many sick among you. And he says, many sleep. And he says, many are weak because they don't discern the Lord's body. What Paul is also saying is, is when you take this and you discern the Lord's body, you will be healed. You cannot stay sick. Doesn't mean you won't get sick, but you can't stay sick long. And you cannot die before your time. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. But there is an appointed time. And everyone must realize that the devil is trying to take you out before your time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Once you've been appointed to die at a certain age or whatever God has planned. Now all of you are guaranteed if you obey your parents, you can live three score and 10 years. That's 70 years. But you can also be blessed past that. My mother is 90. She's 20 years past 70. My father-in-law is 91. They're here. They're way past 70. They did something in their life. They took communion. They obey God, and God has given them way much more time. Okay? And when you're sick, now if it's your time to go, it's all right. But if it's not your time to go, communion protects you. This is what protects our children from bullets, accidents of of being killed. You may have an accident, but it won't kill you. So when we take our Thanksgiving meal, this is a meal. You're holding a meal. Jesus says, as often as you do this, You do this in remembrance of me. When you drink this, this puts life, strength, and it puts healing in your body. In fact, if you're not sick, you want to take it so that when sickness does come, it has to leave your body. 
Oh, I get sick, but I don't stay sick long. Everybody got that? So let's do this by saying these words. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus we discern. We discern. We're very sincere. We're very sincere. If there's anything in my heart, if there is anything in my heart, forgive me. Forgive me. I believe. I believe. You're the Son of God. You are the Son of God. You died for my sins. You died for my sins. You took stripes on your back. You took stripes on your back. For my healing. For my healing. And you give me power when I take Holy Communion. Now let me bless the cup. Lift your cup up. I bless it like Jesus did. I bless the cup that you're about to take. The wealth, the favor, the power, the healing. I command in the name of Jesus, if there's any sickness in your body, in the next four or five days, let it leave your body in the name of Jesus because of this communion. And then in the name of Jesus, It'll protect you from death until your appointed time. And in the name of Jesus, we are grateful on Thanksgiving, Lord, that this is better than turkey. This is better than the dressing. And we thank you for all of that. But what we are taking, Lord, is your meal. And you said as often as you do that, you're in remembrance of me. And I will heal you I will deliver you. I will bless you. Everybody, in the name of Jesus and everybody watching me, let us now take our Thanksgiving meal, Holy Communion. prayer Friday morning. I know there's uh, services for the Johnson family in the afternoon, but I want you all to have a good Thanksgiving meal. I want you all to shop till you drop, but you better be here for church Sunday because it's going to be a great, great day. Now, let me just tell you before I dismiss you, all of you were headed for the lobby. I'm going to the lobby. Melanie and I are going to the lobby. They got a sound system out there and we're going to flip on the lights and we're gonna start this season and we're gonna have a party just for about five minutes. So you'll go out there and get ready. So head for the lobby. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. I enjoyed, I enjoyed this service. Now I know many of you are not gonna to get to go to the lobby, but uh, I don't know if Adam and the team will be able to get a camera out there. I'm not sure. We'll try in the aftermath of me speaking here, maybe they can get a camera and you can get a little glimpse of what is happening uh, tonight on live streaming. That means we'll continue. Uh, maybe it's, 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 it's going on right now, but it's gonna be so exciting. Tonight, I believe that Thanksgiving, 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 you entered his presence for Thanksgiving. I believe the prophet said there was a triple portion blessing coming upon the body here. I just know that something has been released. Let the expectancy of what was said tonight and what we felt, and of course, revealed with Scrooge. All of you that live out of town, come. Come in for one of the weekends. You can see Scrooge 
and you can also be in one of our live services on Sunday. You know that this year, this year, uh, you can get all the schedule on, on our site, but uh, Christmas Eve is gonna be two services, two o'clock, four o'clock. Uh, no Christmas uh, service live in the auditorium. We want, to, we want you to spend it with your family. So Melody and I and the team, we're gonna bring Christmas to you right in your home. You can watch it on channel 26 for you that live in Chicago, or you can watch it right here at 8.30, 10.30, 12.30 on Sunday. But we are doing a special broadcast. We're gonna come into your home and have Christmas at home with you. And of course with Jesus. That's gonna be on Christmas weekend. And then, and then New Year's Eve, we have it on Saturday nights, kind of unusual, you know, Saturday night, cause it's Sunday. But here's what we decided to do. We're gonna have the big New Year's Eve service, the fireworks, the dr balloon drop. Then on New Year's Day, we have one mass service. It's gonna be at 1230, one service, one service, 1230 and it's just gonna be great. And I'm excited about everybody congregating. That kind of helps us, you know. I know the 8.30 crowd will say, but I wanna come to the 8.30. Well, we've been up midnight, one o'clock, everybody leaves here, gets gone about 1.30 after everything is done. And then, you know, we're gonna let our staff and light people and sound people and television people kind of rest so that we can be for the big service. It's only one time every seven years. We won't do this next year, but this is only once every seven years. And so I'm excited about the schedules that are coming up. It's gonna be great. Scrooge is gonna be on first Saturday night in December and every Saturday in December, you don't want to miss it. Well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you that watch afar and you that watch near, you that watch over the ponds of Atlantic or Pacific, thank you. And let me just tell you, I believe because you have connected with us, you are a part of this incredible blessing that God is gonna put upon you and get ready for the next 30 days, the next 30, 45 days. Watch things begin to happen because you have been connected and God has given us this assurance. So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Don't eat too much turkey. And remember Friday morning, they call it Black Friday for a big shopping spree. Well, at six o'clock, I'll be right here. I'll be praying. Let's all start our day at six o'clock prayer. I'll be in the auditorium. It'll be live, Facebook. And so we'll have prayer Friday morning and then Sunday, it will be great. Happy Thanksgiving.